Hello, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. And today, I would like to talk to you about Thy Will Be Done by Alexander Marsh. Before I do this review, I'd very much like you to look at cardmagiccourse.com. It's very good. I uploaded more videos uh, today to my Royal Road to Card Magic course, which is on it, which you get with it. And it's huge. I mean, it's getting um, a bit silly now. So it's, it's, there's so much on it, so many resources. The live sessions are really, really good fun. Um, and you get them, whatever membership you get, you get to watch the live sessions if you get the 9.99 membership, or you get to join in if you get the 22.99. And we're now having guest lecturers every month as well, which is super exciting. So cardmagiccourse.com, have a look at it. It's rather, rather good. But I would say that, don't take my word for it ask people. Right, uh, and like and subscribe. If I said that before, sorry, but if I didn't, I've just said it then. Um, <laughs> thy will be done. Okay. Okay, you're done? Yeah. Okay, now do you want to change your mind? Do you want to swap objects with me or with you or anything like no, that? No, I'm sticking with this. Sticking with this? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you have the coin. Mm -hmm. I've got the pen and the watch is just sit on the table. Yeah. So as you know, when you look at a tarot card, you see reflections of yourself and sometimes the future. Okay. And that's exactly why I chose this single card for this experiment. Because if I show you, you can see a reflection of yourself. Because you are holding the coin. <laughs> I'm holding the pen as the magician and the watch is on the table. <laughs> nice. The little hand's pointing at the seven. Seven. And the big hand I'm is gonna, pointing... I'm going to call you out on this. The, it's not... It's 14 minutes past seven. 40, so you say like quarter past seven. If you, it's not quarter past seven. If you were seven, talking it's... normally, you say like quarter past seven to a person. Yeah. 14 minutes past seven is what you're saying. That's, that's what I'm seeing here. Okay. You set the time on the watch. <laughs> you did. don't know what it is. No. I don't know what it is. You take a look. Oh, uh, let's do it. What is the time <laughs> on that watch? Yeah, nice. 14 minutes past seven. There it is. Uh, this has been out a while and I wanted to play with it. I wanted to actually perform it and uh, uh, it's, I'll tell you what it is. It's from the 1914, so it looks pretty and it's got, um, it's got pretty, I've got to make, remember to cover the thing, but it's got pretty um, uh, uh, packaging, which is good, but obviously that's not the only thing that's important. And it comes with two tarot cards. And I was like, well, how good can that be with two tarot cards? And actually, what it doesn't, it comes with one tarot card duplicated uh, to a different size, which is very important. So basically, this is a one card trick, which is, it really piqued my interest. And it's a version of Free Will, Deddy Carbuzier's uh, Free Will. And um, I, there's loads of work on this, as you know. And I thought, again, well, you know, do we need another one of them? And the, the routine is, well, I'll put, I'll put a clip of the routine, but it's basically... Um, you go through a process, you introduce the tarot card, and there's three objects in play, and they are in certain positions which is predicted on the tarot card. Again, as my usual thing, that's a terrible way of describing it, but you'll get the idea. Uh, and that's why I wanted to perform it before doing it, because I was thinking, what, is this gonna, is this gonna fly? And actually, it absolutely does, and I've really enjoyed performing this. The reason you get two of these is one of them can fit into your wallet, and of course, because it's a 1914, it can fit into your shadow wallet, but it can fit into your normal wallet as well. And that's really important, because if you're going to be carrying around a big tarot card, in a lot of situations, it's going to get creased and, uh, and knackered. And I think that that shows kind of how they're thinking. And I really, I'm really starting to like this, this stuff from the 1914. I'm really starting to like the way they think. They seem to be a real quality... Um, magic uh, producer of magic stuff and they think about detail which is important and in the download there is loads of detail in this so all the downloads I've watched that come with the tricks of theirs and of course their standalone downloads have, have always given me food for thought and, and I've learned something from them and because I'm doing more and more mentalism and also not just mentalism but looking at how I'm uh, performing my routines and, and, and structuring them I've learned a lot from these guys they're, they're some really good stuff so you get the breakdown of the process, the process that we all know about, but importantly, like a lot of stuff that's coming out now, it's only one step of that process and, and there is a free choice involved. Now this is really important because, I'll talk about Equivoke, Equivoke, Equivocate, whatever, um, it still works if it's as numerous levels. It, I'm like, I've talked about it so much, but I've performed, you know, 
a version of which has got like 10 levels of a queen that just goes on, but people are still blown away. With this, it's one, and then it's a free choice, and you emphasize that, and there's loads of work on scripting on this, and the scripting is really important. You haven't got to learn a massive script, but there are a couple of things you can say which really cement the fairness of this process, and the process is really good fun. The other important thing is, from the spectator's point of view, you can't see what they're doing, so it's a silent egg vote, really. It's kind of a silent process where you, you don't see it anyway, so it kind of makes it seem even more fair. So that, with the scripting and with the tutorial on how to make that not seeing work very well, um, you've got a really strong piece of magic here. And, and I've done this, I've probably performed it six times now. Um, three of them with people who haven't seen much, and maybe three that have seen quite a lot, and all of them have just gone, that's really weird or that's really spooky. There's a real character to this. And I've talked about this before as well, the, the tarot, when you introduce tarot, people, people are interested. And also, one tarot card, people are really interested. So you've got one card and you show them it, but they obviously, they glance at it and you kind of introduce it as the magician, which obviously has context. So you can do it as a magic trick or a mentalism trick. Of course, it is mentalism at its base, but it's in its purity. But um, I don't think you have to be a, a kind of have that, what's the word, spiritual is not the word, but you know tarot can be a little bit, um, uh, you know what I mean. You can do it as a magic trick, that's what I'm saying. You can be a magician and go, right, let's do this. But it, if you want to make it more of an experience, you can. That's what I'm trying to say. So the performance of this, the details, the there is a watch force on this, which is great, and he goes through that, and like he says on it, I first saw this on the Richard Austin and L&L DVDs, which are just stunning, um, and you can incorporate this watch force, but I've done it without the watch, I've just done it without any of that, now that does strengthen it a lot, but I've done it with just, you know, if, if I just put my watch on the table and don't want to do anything with that, that's great, obviously you can incorporate, if you've got things like Turner watch, you can do things like that, but you don't need that, he uses a watch that he said he got for a tenner, on eBay and that's completely fine. So you can use a normal watch, it doesn't even have to have a battery in it, it doesn't have to work, but you can you can do the, the watch part with that. But I would say it does work as quite a lovely thing without it. Maybe not a closer or anything like that, that kind of makes it a little bit stronger. Um, but it works, so if you want to do it more impromptu, that's totally fine as well. There are numerous things built into this card, They've, there's loads of stuff. So there's the, the main routine and then there's, as he says, if you know about Banachek's psychological forces um, there's something around that built into it there's a different picture on the back which you introduce at the beginning to give the three objects context but then you can use that in different ways so there's different times you can do on it there's a date on the coin uh, just loads of stuff that is built into one card that's why I think it's so cool and I think again from a spectator's point of view because you've started the routine with one thing and obviously the three objects and that's it it's a really lovely thing Alexander's thought about these objects as well because he says you would use those objects for different things. So in your other parts of the routine, you may use the pen, obviously, for billet work. You may use the coin for witch hand or coin bend. So you've, you've got things you can incorporate in a different way. And I like the way they're doing this if you've got your shadow wallet or any wallet. The fact we're getting this everyday carry thing that everybody's talking about now, but being able to incorporate so much into this. I think it's really, really exciting, and I'm really enjoying the fact that I can go out with my wallet and my phone. That's all I need, really. Yes, I can have a deck of cards and all that, but uh, I'm glad I'm getting into this kind of thing, and I'm glad it's something that's becoming uh, more more, um, more prevalent, really, in, in, in our work. I think it's exciting. You know, magic's moving in exciting ways, and, and I think that the, the sort of way magic and mentalism are being mixed at the moment is great, but I, I digress. He's got a really nice thing for those of you who struggle with, with memory and, and remembering the scripts. Uh, while you're remembering that in the background, he's got a version of this where he just kind of wings it and jazzes it. And I think that's what happens. Sometimes we can get caught up in remembering what, what we're going to say then. And when you actually do it, you realise that it's kind of a lot more intuitive than you think. So, and this really happened with me. I, uh, there was a couple of things I had to remember. And I thought, well, I'm just going to go and try it. And when you do it, you, it kind of makes sense what you've got to say. And you, there is an element of, of being able to kind of improvise around this as well. Uh, so I don't get put off by having to remember loads of stuff. There's very little you've got to remember. And if you don't, you can just kind of play with it and get to where you want to get. Even if it feels a bit sticky, the end is lovely. And don't forget, they don't even think you can see what's happening. So it's, 
it's great. Really like this. It's, it's a really practical thing to carry around with you. I think a lot of people are going to like it. A lot of people have. Like, it's been out for a while. But uh, as I said, I wanted to take it out and feel what it felt like to, to do it. And it was, it's, it's really worth picking up. So that's uh, Thy Will Be Done. All the details will be below. Thank you to the 1914 for sending this to me. Uh, check out all their stuff on their website. That link will be below as well. Please like, subscribe, check out Card Magic Course and have a great one. Cheers.